Welcome back to another chapter of Message Crawler Video Manual. In this chapter, we're going to go over all the export options that are available in version 5. Let's go to my screen and take a look at Message Crawler. Now here I have a dat file loaded and you can see all the fields on the screen. We don't really need to do anything with these fields. We're just interested in export options. However, before you navigate to export menu, which is located here, you want to make sure your dat file is sorted. And the sort order that's required is documents need to be started by conversation first. So whichever field you're going to use to group your messages together and identify which set of records will become what our SMF file. That's our criteria number one. Then we want to sort within the conversation by date to make sure all messages show up in the chronological order and finally sort by control number so that our families show up in the right order, which means a parent message first and attachment following that. If you use any of the import options here, except that file or directory list or cross-reference, any of the known application types, message crawler will load data and sort it in the proper order for you so you don't have to change anything if you happen to click on the headers or change sort order. Uh, you may want to resort data again using sort button or just reload data again. So let's go to export, click on RSMF and review various options we have here. Now in this menu, uh, options have been organized into multiple columns and each column specifies what the items there belong to. And in column number one, we have all the required fields meaning we have to select them in order to have successful RSMF conversion. Let's talk about individual fields here. So control number is our sequential number, something that we've used to like a doc ID or control number that keeps all the documents in order. Group identifier is similar to bag attach field. And this is what identifies what is parent and what is attachment. So if we look at uh, record number four here, we'll see control numbers for five and group identifier four and four. And that tells message caller that when it hits the first occurrence of four, that's going to be our message and other occurrences of four is going to be attachment. If you receive an error message, unable to find attachments for a lot of documents, chances are you have resorted your grid and uh, the attachments do not come after uh, messages they were resort it in some other way. So next field we have is group uh, conversation identifier. And this is one of the most important fields because this will tell you how many RSMF files you're going to have at the export. Uh, when you look at the grid here, you'll see the conversation identifier is uh, one. And then whenever the conversation identifier changes to two, this will tell message crawler to start a new RSMF file. And then it's going to keep scanning down, 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 down until it hits a different value in this field. So it doesn't care whether it's sequential or not. It's just looking for a change in this field. If you have your data that's not sorted and you have conversation two, three, two, three, two, three, each one of those changes will trigger a new RSMF file creation and you're going to have a bad export. That's why it's important to make sure your data is sorted by conversation first, sort date second, control number third. And this is where we're going to select it. Next, we have our sender. Uh, so this is a person who is sending the message. We have a timestamp, when the message is being sent, and body, which is what the actual message contains. Then we have our messaging platform. Now this is mostly cosmetic setting but it's available in relativity and therefore it's available here. So you can assign that these messages are SMS messages, or if you have a field like an application type, you can choose that this is the specific uh, messages coming from a specific application. Now, not all application types are supported and this changes all the time. So what I recommend you do is go to help RSMF specifications and you can see what application types are supported by relativity. Again, like I said, it's, a, it's a, just a cosmetic uh, setting. It's just how the messages are going to look or the icon inside 
relativity so it doesn't really matter it does not affect uh, review however what may affect review is type of a conversation here we have an option for direct or a channel conversation and the channel conversation has additional capabilities of displaying users as they join and leave the channel if you have a direct communications and you have users join and leave a channel you will get an error message it is not supported in direct communications so if you're dealing with slack data channel is what you should be selecting here all right let's move on to optional uh, section here and first we have message type so this is what we were talking about in type of a conversation if you select a channel conversation you can select a field with a message type that can contain either message join channel leave channel um, history and couple of others again you can read more about it from that help menu in rsmf specifications i'm trying to avoid giving you the hard exact values because these things change as we'll see with version 2.0 of rsmf next we have a very important field called two even though it's optional it's still really nice to have so what the two does is it tells you who were other members on the channel or who were other recipients on um, of this text message so why is it optional well because you don't have to have to rsmf contains just a list of additional names who were participating in the channel and in fact it doesn't even display those names when you look in the data in the viewer so your two information will not be visible when you look at rsmf file in a native format however those names will be visible when you convert that rsmf into an image so that's the only time you'll see them as well as in the metadata fields uh, it is important to specify correct names delimiter some forensic software use comma and others use semicolon to separate names so you should look at the two column and make sure you are using correct multi-name delimiter otherwise you will have weird results now if you have fields for deleted where the message was deleted uh, you can specify that here same for importance uh, reactions is a field that i generate based on um, slack data or reactions in the slack data it's um it's a delimited uh, field by tilde and it contains any reactions if someone gives a message thumbs up thumbs down smiley face and so on uh, different applications handle reactions differently for example microsoft teams will include an actual gif as an attachment with the reaction to a message uh, so that will look a little different than if you were to be working with slack data all right, now we coming down to RSMF 2.0 only fields. And we have custodian, which is uh, something you would expect, custodian of the data. We have direction, whether the message is incoming or outgoing. And we have event collection ID. This is something that we can use to group uh, multiple RSMF files together in order to uh, make more sense of multiple files during review. Now, this is new rsmf 2.0 is new and only available in relativity one if you're using relativity server you definitely should stick to rsmf one specifications uh, and by the way this is where you would choose which specification to conform to version one or version two uh, being that rsmf two specifications are fairly new and i don't have too much experience once i learn more about it i will make a separate follow-up video to this where i'll just talk about 2.0 specs what's new how it works and how it how different changes here reflect inside relativity however message crawler is 2.0 spec compliant it's just that i don't have enough experience to intelligently talk about uh, how to for example use event collection id inside relativity all right now we're moving on to attachment information so in order to pull in all attachments into our smf file we need attachment path as well as attachment name those are the two fields that are needed in uh, in order to have attachments inside the smf file if you are working with relative path like we see here attachment path it doesn't start with a drive letter or unc you can specify path prefix or the initial path here uh, it would automatically be updated here when you loaded that file 
However, if it is missing, you can adjust it yourself. Another option here we have for missing attachments. Now, it is normal to have some missing attachments here and there. Even on systems that's supposed to be locked down like Slack, you will have a few missing attachments here and there. And one of the options that I was asked to add is an indication inside the RSMF file that attachment is missing. According to specifications, if attachment is missing, you should not include uh, any attachment section in RSMF file, otherwise it will trigger an error. Uh, some of my clients expressed an interest in specifically seeing that error inside the RSMF to indicate to review team that attachment was present in some, at some point, and perhaps if the conversation is interesting, they may want to pursue it and try to get that attachment. Now, moving over to the right, we have additional metadata fields. One of the, um, one of the things about RSMF is it's a little difficult to include extra metadata. So if we want to have, for example, application name where it was generated from custodian information, uh, perhaps a Slack channel name, uh, which channel communications took place, well, there is not a great way to put that information into RSMF. So to do that, uh, there are a number of options where we can take that additional metadata and export it to and later on put it into relativity. So option number one is write to cross-reference file. What this will do is after you export data, a that file will be generated that contains uh, RSMF file name plus this, these metadata fields that you select. What you'll do is process your RSMF files into relativity as normal, and then you'll use uh, that, that file to overlay additional fields into relativity. And you will use file name as your identifier for overlay. Another way you can load metadata to relativity is write fields to RSMF header. Now, RSMF is actually an EML file, so it supports custom uh, what's called X headers. So we can write these fields into the header of RSMF file, and then you don't need to uh, import overlay into relativity. You will see those fields in message header field inside relativity. However, they're all going to be as one long string, so not necessarily the best option, but if you need to do a filter, you can say uh, application equals Skype and be able to filter like that. And the last option we have add to body. And this will add this metadata to each individual message. And when you go into a viewer uh, and you see all the messages, there will be a question mark next to a message. And if you hover your mouse over that, it'll pop up with additional information about that message. For example, message ID is a great field to put there. This way, if someone has a question about authenticity of this message or they want to investigate where it came from, they can simply copy and paste that message ID, find the original Slack export or anything else, and perform search by that message ID. Finally, we're coming down to the export uh, path and some of the other export options here on the bottom. Now, for destination path, pretty obvious, you specify a path where you want to export data to, and we have an option how to name our RSMF files. I found that it's best to name them by conversation. However, if you uncheck this option, they will be named by control number. We can conform to version one and two, and we can turn on or off something called high performance mode. Uh, Message Crawler is a 64-bit multi-threaded application, and it will use up all the resources you have. It will use all the CPU cores, and it will use tons of memory in order to improve performance. If you're on a low-power computer, or perhaps you have a slow network and you don't want IT people to get too angry with you, you can turn off the high-performance mode, and software will be much gentler on your CPU, memory, network, etc. And for some people who are using slower computers with very little RAM, it may prevent some of the crashing. So that's one of the options you can consider if software crashes at the export. Now, on the bottom, we have export attachment handling. One of the issues you may experience with RSMF files is their size. If RSMF files grow past five to 600 megabytes, they may become a problem and there could be a problem either generating using message crawler 
validating using a validation module that's built into message crawler or processing in relativity. So you may get uh, out of memory error if you uh, run in an export. That means message crawler could not write that much data into one file. If you have a validation error, that means relativity's uh, DLL have checked this RSMF file and determine that it's probably not going to work in relativity. Even though message crawler was able to create it, you most likely going to get an error in relativity. And even if all those things pass, you may receive an error when processing certain large files in relativity. How large? I find that um, I have good luck at about five to 600 megabytes and anything past that is a bit of a gamble. One day it may work, one day it may not. So in order to avoid this problem, I created an option called export attachments externally. So we can either always write attachments to a separate file or only if the total number of attachments exceeds certain number of megabytes. Um, I have a separate video where I use this option to perform an export and load it to relativity. There is some additional complexity that comes with using this option and I explained that very well in that video and how to load the data. So uh, you should definitely check it out as it is part of message crawler video manual. Finally, we have our export options. So we can click on generate export and this will export all the data into RSMF. A part of a normal export are two steps. One, software will scan uh, the table and sort of build RSMF files in memory, and then it's going to write them out to disk. What we can do here in three-step export, we can uh, manually go through the steps. So I can hit, hit build in memory. So this will create four files, and then we can click on the preview. And what this will allow you to do is to see how many RSMF files you're going to get. So in our case, we would get four because we have four conversations. We can see how many messages we would get per RSMF, how many attachments, and what is the estimate, estimated size of those RSMF files. So this is a great place to preview what, how big the files are going to be. And if you see in that they're going into gigabyte territory, then you know you probably need to change something and you need to go back here and you use one of the conversation tools to split up those conversations into smaller chunks. Maybe you were exporting uh, by month or something like that, you need to bring it down by week or by day. All right, so those are the export options here. You should always check your error log if there are any er errors show up. This is where you can click here and read any messages about how the process was going, uh, if any errors came up. And if there are any errors, you should definitely investigate them. Uh, look at the data in grid. If you have attachment errors, trace the path, make sure that you don't have any uh, path issues, drive letter issues, and so on. Uh, and all the way to the right, you can load and save all these options as presets so it becomes much easier to reuse them. All right, that's the overview of Message Crawler 5 export screen. If you have any questions, comments, please email me and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you on the next chapter of Message Crawler video manual.